ever want to change the color of just one thing in your scene, like a shirt? Easy to do. Let me show you how. For our example, we'll be increasing the saturation of these boulders by applying a color mask to our color correction. First, we'll add a color correction. Select the clip and position the playhead over it. Then, navigate to the enhancement icon below the viewer and choose Show Color Inspector or use the shortcut Command 6. Then, navigate to the top right and choose a color correction from the drop down. We'll choose Color Board. Before we apply any changes, we'll click on this Apply Effects Masks button and apply a color mask. The controls will appear at the bottom of the color inspector. You'll notice that you can choose a type of color mask. 3D is OK, but it's a bit limited compared to HSL, because once you make a selection, you'll only have this softness slider to add or remove surrounding colors. We'll switch it to HSL to have a bit more control. HSL stands for Hue, Saturation, and Luma, and we can adjust these individually to refine our mask. We'll show you how that works. Heads up, please subscribe, comment, and share, and like, and do everything you can because this tutorial is awesome. First, we can use the eyedropper tool to select the colors we'd like to include in our mask. While dragging, Everything in the mask is in color, and the outside of the mask is in gray. Once you drag out your first selection, you can click on this View Masks button to look at your mask in black and white view, meaning everything in the mask is in white, and everything outside the mask is in black. We want a more accurate mask. So we'll do our best to eliminate grays and make sure the entire rock is included. You can also choose color from this menu. To view your mask is color and everything else is gray. But we prefer black and white, so we'll set it back to that. To switch back to preview mode, click again on the view masks button. Some selections may be trickier than others. You may have to start with a small circle, then continue adding to your mask by holding down Shift and dragging across additional areas. Right now, the mask is covering too many colors, so we'll keep working on it. If you need to remove any colors from your mask, hold down Option and drag through the colors you don't want. The mask is still not looking great, so we'll redo our selection by dragging a new circle over the rock. It looks pretty good so far, but let's keep going. It's looking decent in matte view, but how can we add these gray and black areas within the rock to our mask? Here's where hue, saturation, and luma parameters can help. Go through and check these boxes on and off with the black and white view to test if any of these aren't included. We obviously need hue checked on, so we'll leave that. But saturation is restricting our mask to a certain range, so we'll check it off so it includes all saturation values of the color we picked. And luma isn't really helping out either. We want our color selected from the darkest darks to the lightest lights. So we'll check that off also. Going back up to Hue, we'll explain how these controls work. The top control represents the range of the value we are selecting. So we can drag one of these to increase the range or decrease it. We'll keep it to just the values of the rock. And below the bar, these controls determine the fall off of the selection. So we can drag them further out to soften our mask selection or inward to tighten it up. Except for a few shadows, the mask looks pretty good. So we'll go ahead and apply a color correction to the rock. We'll go back up to the color board, grab this master control, and we'll drag it to make the colors of the rock warmer, 
to contrast with the blues of the water and the sky. And we'll select saturation to add some more color to the rock with a focus on the highlights. We'll check the effect on and off to check our result. Now that looks way better. We're working inside of the mask, but it's important to note that we can make color changes outside the mask as well. So we could change the blue color to something else. Or maybe play around with the saturation. Here's the before and after. Drum roll, please. Look at our results. You may be asking yourself, is there a way we can cover these rock shadows in our mask? The answer is yes, but we'll need to use a shape mask to do so. So check out our tutorial linked in the description below to learn how to use a shape mask with a color mask to achieve perfect coverage. Color masks are awesome. You're awesome. Our show is over. Peace! Don't forget to check out Pixel Film Studios, where you can find Final Cut Pro plugins designed for beginners and professionals alike to take your projects to the next level. If you'd like to see the next episode in this series, or the past one, or the future one, and...